All right, we're making a yeast starter. If you're buying dry yeast, you typically don't need to make a yeast starter because you're getting a lot of viable yeast cells. You're getting less yeast cells in the uh, liquid yeast. Um, so your alternative is to get the amount of yeast that required for a decent sized beer. We're doing like a 1062, 1063 beer tomorrow, um, which will require two of these. Right. These are six dollars. DME costs pennies. The yeast is going to multiply in the starter. Gotcha. So we're going to double our yeast for pennies versus another six dollars. Okay. So. I always like to make my starters around ten forty, um, and I use the one gram of DME per ten milliliters of water. Um, so I got a hundred grams of DME that I weighed out. Uh, that just stands for dry malt extract. And then I'm going to add about 1,200 milliliters of water to this and then add the DME and uh, we'll get this going. I'm uh, boiling it right on the hot plate in the uh, flask. Usually use gas burner, not as many issues, but it should be fine. And then we're just gonna heat this up to a boil, boil for 10 minutes. And I put a little bit <clears throat> more liquid in. I want a thousand milliliters um, at the end of boil. So I, I probably put about 1200 in. So just stir it every so often. And just keep an eye on it. You don't want it to foam up. <laughs> yep, and that's what you wanna be careful of. <laughs> Let's try to set the timer. <laughs> and we're able to put this flask right on the burner because it's what pyrex or something yeah yeah they're they're scientific um flasks so they're made to be put directly on burners gotcha. and then you can throw it directly into the sink to cool it gotcha. and it won't crack so you don't want to do this with a standard glass jar you yeah. know so it doesn't need to be vigorous it just needs to yeah you just want to get a little bit of that water out just to to get your uh, gravity points you're looking for. This is usually about what I boil at. It's basically just a really small beer yeah. with the uh, dried malt extract, obviously without hops. So. Right. And you're also sanitizing, is that what yeah, I mean, it's, you're, you're um, killing all the bacteria in the water? Yeah, I, I put the stir bar in there at the beginning too, so that's getting sanitized during this. That's kind of why I like using one vessel. It's less to clean and you don't really have to sanitize anything because mm -hmm. this is being boiled. I do have to start sanding here. I always uh, sanitize the uh, stopper. It's a foam stopper. Five minutes left. All right, timer's off. Uh, it's been 10 minutes. So we're just gonna bring this to the sink. We're chilling the yeast starter down. We wanna get it down to about 70 or so to uh, pitch the yeast. So we're just gonna give it a swirl every once in a while, add the cold water, and then it'll, it'll cool pretty quickly. It's a small amount of uh, work in there. All right, it's been 10, 15 minutes. We've been giving it the old swirl and dunk, and uh, we're definitely down to pitching temperature. I want to take a gravity reading, so I'm just going to put some of the uh, starter in here. We're at 1035, 1036, which is fine. Probably could have boiled it a few, a few more minutes, but that'll be more than adequate for our needs. Get the uh, stir plate. You can hear the magnetic stir bar attach itself to the plate itself. We're gonna take our sanitized yeast and add it to the yeast starter. And that's the... Uh... Just a little stopper. Just keep stuff from getting in it. Yeah, 
And we'll let that stir for 12, 14 hours and we'll uh, be ready to pitch this tomorrow. You just want to make sure that it doesn't fly up. Uh, so you just got to keep an eye on it, but should be good. We'll let it boil for 10 minutes and uh, should be good. Yeah, and that's what you want to be careful of. <laughs> Let's try to set the timer. Good catch, cameraman.